In this video, we will be rewriting a couple of lines of code for creating the map so that we can use a text document for generating our level just to make it easier for ourselves to make different maps. So we need to create a folder for our text document because we need to make sure that the text document is um, exported with the project whenever you build it. And to do so, we have to create a folder called resources because the, everything inside the resources folder will go into the build when you go to the menu and build it out. So you can right click on the asset folder, click create and click folder and then write resources with capital R like so. And in here we have to add a new text document and maybe you can't create a text document here. So the easiest thing is actually to right click on resources, show an explorer and then go into resources, right click in here, new text document like so and then call it level. And it's very important if you call it level with capital L, then you also need to call it level with capital L whenever you um, you load the file from your script. So remember this name because you need to use it later. When we are creating this document, we need to know what kind of tiles we want. As you can see, my sand here is number four, the first sand is four, and the normal grass is, is one. So I'm just gonna use these two tiles to generate my map just to show you that we can add some different tiles in, in a pattern here from a text document. But you can of course use whatever tiles you want and generate your map is exactly as you want. But remember, um, we are going to use A star for pathfinding here. So we're not going to move only on the path right away. Um, but I've already gotten some requests about uh, making sure that the mobs can only move on the path. So we will add another game mode later, I think, when we're done with the with the normal tutorial here. So um, let's open up our text document here. And in here, we have to make some lines. So each line here will be um, a line of, uh, of tiles. So you need to write the numbers that you want uh, for each tile. For example, if I want a sand tile, then I write four. If I want a grass tile, I write one. So for example, I can write four, four, one, that's two sand and one grass, and then four, four, one, four, 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 one, and so on. But I've already pre-made a level here, it looks like this. Um, so you can just stop the video, copy and paste this, uh, not copy and paste, but uh, write it down. Um, or actually, I'm going to put this in the description below, so you can just copy and paste it, so you can just do that. Uh, anyway, this will make a pattern of um, what is it called sand as you can see it starts here and the sand goes down and then you can go down here and up and over so it's like a snake pattern or something for for the sand and everything else is grass so as you can see every line here will be a line of tiles in the game so it's going to look exactly like this in the games which would make it easier for us to figure out how we want to structure the tile map you might be wondering we have some kind of lines out here. And these lines are indicators so that when we create our code, it's easy for us to figure out when we need to start to create the next line of tile because we can just look for this uh, line here or this um, dash here. You can use any kind of sign out here. I'm just using a dash because I think it's easier. So basically you need to put this one on the end of every single line except the last one because this one indicates that we have a next line we need to switch to, but we don't have more lines down here with the last line of grass. So we simply just don't make that dash. So this is how we're going to structure our tiles. So this might be a little confusing, but uh, I'm sure it will make sense when we start to write the code for actually loading this. So we need to go to the bottom of our script and on the bottom of our script, we will have to make a new function called read text because up here we have our map data but we're just writing every single line by hand here. And we're not interested in that. We want to be able to create a function that reads the text document and takes the these lines here and puts them in here. So basically we will end up with something that looks like this, right? This is the numbers here and the next line will be here or something, right? So this is basically what we're going to do by programming. So you can see this would be a very long string and very uh, hard to get an overview of. So that's why I chose to put it in the text document instead. 
So basically, this instantiation here can be deleted. So now we need to create a function that can read this tile map here, or read this te text document, sorry, and put that text document into the string array here. So basically, create a string array from this text document that looks like this. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So now it's going to complain and everything. Don't worry about that error here. It's going to be fixed in a minute. So we need to make a private function and it needs to return a string array because we have our map in a string array. So we tell it that it needs to return a type of st string array and we're going to call it read label text. So there we go, that's our function. So we can actually go up here in our create level and set our map data, data equal to read level text. And the reason that I can do this is because the function returns a string array. So it takes that string array and returns it into map data. So something we return down here will be put into this, um, this um, array here. And it still complains down here, but that's because we don't return anything. First of all, we need to load the text. So we can say text um, text asset and call it data. And we can say it's equal to resources, resources.load. So we're using resources.load to get to the resources folder here and load the level text. So it's very important that you name the resources folder correct, else it's not going to work. And then we say that load and we need to load a uh, level. And here it's also important to use the correct name as you did out in the folder. And we need to load it as text asset. And text asset just type from uh, from Unity engine that you're using for handling text. Okay. Now we need to load everything from here into a string. So to do so, we need to use something called uh, text replace or basically we need to make sure that the string looks like this because right now we have it on each line. And the reason we have it on different lines is that it makes it easier for us to create a tile map that looks nice. So for example, I can make this pattern here very nice, very easily with the with the sand path up and down. But if we did like this, right, it would be harder for me to tell how the path is actually going to look in the end. So we are going to take this text here and from our code, we are going to change it into something uh, that looks like so this. Sorry, my mouse just died. I need to put in some power. There we go. Um, and then we're going to change it into something like this in a string in C sharp. So it's easier for us to read because right now there is a new line character behind every single line here. And that's going to mess up our loading of the level because we don't know what a new line is. So we need to remove these new lines and replace them with an empty space so the string actually starts to look like this. But this just programmatically, um, we are going to do this like we are going to do it um, yeah, by programming. That's what I'm trying to say here. Yes, so our data we just loaded is ne needs to be equal to data dot text. So we get the text from the data we just loaded. We get the text from the text document dot replace. And we are going to replace environment And if you can't find environment, then you simply have to go to the top here and write using system dot um, using system. I actually just think, yeah, I just misspelled environment. Yes. So you just need to go up here and write using system if you don't have the environment or if you have Visual Studio, you can actually do like this. Just right click environment quick actions and then write using system and then then it should be lit up by blue but and it would just add this using system by itself that's because then it's in that namespace anyway we need to uh, replace the new line with a string dot empty so basically what we're doing now is that we are replacing every single new line we have with a, um, a string dot empty and I made a mistake here. It's not the data, it's a new string. So we need a string temporary data. Um, actually, I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call this bind data 
I'm going to call this one data. There we go. So our bind data is our text asset. Then we create a new string called data, and it's equal to bind data dot text replace, where we replace every single new line with an empty string. So inside data we have this structure here where all these lines are moved up here. So this is what is inside data. Okay, so now we need to create the structure we had up here before, where we have like um, a, an index with a string in it. So we need to split this string. So we need to find and split our strings into an array based on these. So every time we find one of these uh, lines here, we need to take this before the line and put it into a place in the array. And we can do that by saying uh, return data dot split very easy and we need to split on the character like a dash and remember those um, single quotations here and then the dash in the middle because now it actually returns this this uh, array it, it returns is equal to all everything in here split between these so now we actually have our array and let's see here that's actually it let's try to save this and jump back into unity and then we play the game let's see what happens if we get an error so if it works there we go now you can see we have our level so we have this sand path that goes up and down up and down and we have all the green stuff around here and right now you can't see your whole map but in the next video I'm going to create a camera script so that we can pan around uh, this area here and see the whole map without going over the edges of the map so i hope this was understandable uh, so thank you very much for watching and remember that inscope studios is a community founded page so all your support is very important to me you can see lots of you are already supporting me by buying my scripts and everything so that's uh, awesome so i can keep making all these tutorials you can support me on Patreon, and if you do so, you can get everything I've ever made. Uh, just go there and download it. And you can also support me by getting one of my projects as a standalone product uh, by clicking the bottom link. So yeah, thank you very much for watching.